Hello, my friends, Enrique here, and today I'm going to show you how you can use this tiny computer right here, the Raspberry Pi, into a retro gaming beast. For this video, I'm going to be using the Raspberry Pi 4 with 8 gigabytes of RAM, but you could also use any of the older models. I choose this one in particular because it's the latest model that have come from the Raspberry Pi, and because it has a faster processor and more RAM memory, it's more capable of playing games, like for example, of Nintendo 64, or even PlayStation 1 and 2. This is something that is really cheap to buy. They aren't expensive at all. You can also find kits in Amazon that they come with everything, with the power supply, the case, fans, if you need them. And if you choose the Raspberry Pi 4, I would recommend you guys that you get some of the heat sinks or even fans with it. I don't have them. I'm going to buy them now in the future because this little thing right here gets really, really hot especially by emulating games. What are we going to need for this tutorial? Well, as I said before, of course, the Raspberry Pi, a power supply for it. I would recommend you guys that you get the official one, but if you don't get any of the official, you have to look that the voltage and amperage are correct for the model of Raspberry Pi that you're using. Because depending on the model of Raspberry Pi that you have, they use different power supplies and different connectors for them. If you also have the Raspberry Pi 4 like mine, you will have to use a micro HDMI to HDMI to be able to connect it to your TV or your monitor. If you use any of the older models like the Raspberry Pi 3, I do believe that they come with a um, full-size HDMI output, so you are going to need a mini HDMI. That's the only thing that I don't really like about the 4 one is the micro HDMI, but anyway. After the Raspberry Pi and the power supply, you are going to need, of course, the cables, um, a memory card, a micro SD card. This one that I choose for this tutorial is 128 gigabytes. You could also use a 32 gigabytes or a 64 gigabytes. You don't need so big, but the bigger, the more games you are available to set up in your system. Of course, a um, micro SD card reader, so you can load the operating system and all the ROMs, a controller and a keyboard to make the initial setup and the controller, of course, to play. You can use any PlayStation controller, Xbox controller. You can also find different controllers that you can purchase, even if they are Bluetooth or with cable for your system. But this is a decision that is up to you guys. Now, when you have your Raspberry Pi and you set it in your case, that is really easy. It's only a couple of screws. Some cases don't even need them. And if you have, of course, the thermal pads or a fan, you will have to set it up. But normally the instructions are going to come with the kit that you purchase or with the case that you purchase. And now let's jump into the PC where I'm going to show you how you can download and install RetroPie in your Raspberry Pi. The first thing that you guys have to know is all the systems that are available already from the get-go on RetroPie. And here is a complete list that I'm going to let you guys, the full link in the description down below for all the systems. Let's just say there are over 50 systems and games over 20,000 a lot more, I do believe. So it's a really complex system for this. Now let's speak about ROMs. Even if it is a backup of a game that you own, it's a little bit of a legal black spot, let's say like this. But what I can tell you guys is that if you simply search in Google for SNS or NES or Atari Jaguar ROMs, you're going to find them. That isn't really a problem. Or if you want, you can go to a website like Arcade Punks. In here, you're going to find a lot of different images that they are already set to go. They contain everything that you're going to need, the RetroPie installation and ROMs, as well as maybe some different themes or front-ends. Most of the downloads here, they are with torrent. So I recommend you guys to at least use a VPN if you're going to download any torrents file. The installation of this is going to be the exact same steps if you download it from the official RetroPie website. Now, I'm going to show you with the official RetroPie website and I'm going to show you the most easiest way with Raspberry Pi OS. When you are in the RetroPie website, you want to click into download, but you have to make sure that you select the correct model for the Raspberry Pi that you are using. If you have the Raspberry Pi 1, the 2 or 3 model, or the 4 or 400. In my case, I have the Raspberry Pi 4, so I'm going to select that one. And it's going to start the download. This is going to take a couple of minutes. In the moment that you are downloading this, if you choose this way or the way of Arcade Punks, you are also going to need to download Balena Etcher to be able to record this into your micro SD. So you want to open the website of Balena Etcher, click in Download for Windows, if you're using a Windows operating system, of course, and wait until it's done. 
Now, most of the files that you're going to be using here, they are compressed. So you're going to need something like WinRAR or 7-zip, but they're both completely free programs that you can download and use it to uncompress those files. Now, after you have finished downloading the official ISO from RetroPie or the one from ArcadePunks and the Balena Etcher software, what you have to do is to install the Balena Etcher software. You only have to agree to the prompt, it's going to get installed and open it already. Now is the time that you want to take your micro SD card and insert it in your system. So you have the Balena Etcher open, you want to click into Flash from File, select the file that you just downloaded, the RetroPie image or the Arcade Punks one, click on Open, and now you want to select the target. Here, be really careful that you choose exactly the micro SD card that you have connected into your system. Don't select any other hard drive or disk that you don't want to lose it, because everything that is in that card is going to get deleted. Select and then you want to click into Flash. And this is going to install that image into your micro SD card. Now, if you want to go for the easy way how to do it, you can go into the Raspberry Pi OS website and you want to select Download for the OS that you're using. For my case, it's Download for Windows. I'm going to click in there. Now, when you have it downloaded, you want to open the file, the Imager, and you want to install the software, the Raspberry Pi Imager. You can install. When this is here, you want to click into Choose OS. Here you can install a lot of different OSs for your Raspberry Pi, for example, like the Raspberry Pi OS, other general purposes, media players like Kodi OS, but we're going to choose the Emulation and Game OS. Click on there, and in here you can select between RetroPy or Recallbox. You can also choose Recallbox, but for this tutorial we're speaking about RetroPy. I recommend you guys RetroPy, the one that I have used it from always and I really enjoy it and I have never had a problem with this system. And here is going to show you the different options depending on the Raspberry Pi that you have. The Raspberry Pi 1 or 0, the Raspberry Pi 2 or 3, or the 4 or 400. 400 is the model that comes included with a keyboard. But anyway, select it. Now you want to choose the storage. Again, guys, be sure that you select the micro SD card that you have in your system where you want to install RetroPie. And now, before we do anything else, you want to click Ctrl, Shift, and X. You're going to open this uh, secret advanced options model, and I recommend you guys that you select Enable SSH, because it's going to be a lot more easy to send your game to the Raspberry Pi using SSH. You want to set a password for the Pi user, and you want to configure your Wi-Fi access. You can also make it later from the RetroPy menu, but it's a lot easier to make it in here. Once that you have selected your Wi-Fi and your password, you want to select the Wi-Fi country where you are, and the rest you don't really need to mess up with this. Click on Save, and now you want to click into Write. This is going to install the RetroPie image in your memory card. Once the process is done, you can remove the micro SD card from your system, plug it into your Raspberry Pi, set the HDMI cable to your TV or your monitor, and connect the power cable at last. The initial setup is going to take a little bit longer, but next time that you start your Raspberry Pi, it's not going to take so long. Once you are in the starter screen and you connect already the controller, you can start making the configuration. So now when RetroPie started, you aren't going to see any consoles or anything else, only the configuration screen. From here, you want to open it. And in here is where you, if you didn't make it in the previous step, set up your Wi-Fi. You want to scroll all the way down, select it from the menu. It's going to open a new configuration place where you can connect to a Wi-Fi network. Select your Wi-Fi connection, pressing OK, and now you will have to enter the password. Once you have done that, it isn't really in full screen. You have a little bit of a black border. You can leave it like this, or if you want to change it, you want to go into Raspi Config, you want to go into Display Options, go into Underscan, disable the Underscan to remove the black border around the screen. And it's going to ask you to reboot your system. You want to click on Yes, and now you should start in full screen mode. But maybe for some games and emulators, it's going to stretch a little bit the game. So maybe you want to change it and leave it back how it was. So now I'm going to show you how you can transfer your games from your system into the Raspberry Pi. There are three ways to do it. One of them is by using one of these, a USB flash drive that you can load up your games and then transfer it into your Raspberry Pi, but it's really slow. The second option is by downloading a software like Potty to SSH into your Raspberry Pi. And the third one, that is the one that I'm going to show you on this video to simplify things because it's the easiest one to follow along. Jump into your PC and open your file explorer. Once you are there, you want to type 
on the bar above RetroPie. Of course, for this method and the SSH method, you have to have both your PC and your Raspberry Pi into the same network. Now, when you feel going to the address of the RetroPie, it's going to ask you for your username and password. Normally, the username is Pi and the password is Raspberry if you didn't change it. And now you're going to be inside of the Raspberry Pi. You want to click with state ROMs. Here you're going to see all the different systems that are available inside of your RetroPie system. You want to choose the according one to the ROM that you want to move. For example, for me, I'm going to be moving and using SNES games. So I want to select the SNES folder. If you want to do, for example, PC Engine, you can choose this folder or Nintendo 64, Mega Drive. If you set them up in a folder that is not the correct one, the game is not going to work. Double click into it. I already have a couple of games here, as you can see. And it's as simple as to select the games that you want to choose and move them to the folder in your Raspberry Pi system. That is pretty much it. You already have your game in your Raspberry Pi. All that you have to do then is restart your system and they are going to be there and work. If you guys are interested in a tutorial about the other two methods that you can use to transfer your games to your Raspberry Pi, just let me know in the comments down below and I will do a tutorial on them. For this tutorial, we're going to leave it in this one. Now, let's jump back into the Raspberry Pi. I want to show you a couple of things there. After you have finished copying all the ROMs that you wanted into your Raspberry Pi, you will need to restart it. For that, you want to click into the Start button and go all the way down where you say Quit and select Restart System. And once your Raspberry Pi restarts, you will be able to see the library of consoles and games that you have available for that console. But one small thing that I want you guys to do before start playing around with the games is something that is going to help you a lot, especially if you have a big library of games. When you go inside of one of your game systems and you want to look into the games that you have there installed, you're going to see it like this. You only see the names of the game and nothing else. And if you have a lot of games, 20,000 or even more games installed in your system, or even if you don't know all of the games that you have installed, if you want to try something new, to see really what is the game about. And to fix this, we're going to go once more pressing the Start button, go into Scraper. Scrape from, I will leave it like this, all of the settings, leave them like this, go into Scrape now. It's going to filter only missing images. Into Systems, select all of your systems, and into the last option right here, user decides on conflicts. If you want to make it manually, I would recommend you that you leave it into on, but if you have a big library, it's going to take a really long time. So I will recommend that you guys set this into off. So it's going to take automatically all of the images and already save them into your Raspberry Pi without asking you all the time for every image if is this one correct or not. You can change them later on. Now you want to click into start and it's going to start the process. I have already made all this process. So now, for example, if we go inside of the Mega Drive, as you can see right here, you are going to be looking at the description of the game underneath and above is going to be the cover image of the game itself. And maybe this is not going to work for all of them. So maybe you will have to play around with the secondary database that this included into Raspberry Pi, or even you can do it manually by downloading them and writing the description yourself. So now all that we have to do is to try a game. As you guys can probably see, the game is running really smooth. I don't have any problems at all. And it looks great. Let's try something different. Now, guys, if you want to go out of the game that you have loaded in the moment and you want to change the game, all that you have to do is to press the Start and Select button at the same time. And this will bring you back once more into the menu of the Raspberry Pi. If you enjoyed the content, don't forget to subscribe and drop a like. And like always, see you on the next time. Thanks for watching, my friends. No! Ah. Anyway, see you in the next time.